Hey guys, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof continues to be in the actual singing. Why do I always say that? I say it because, um, again, I roam the internet and I, I love, I'm a philomathian, which means a lover of learning. And so I love to see, you know, what people are d doing and saying and how culture meshes and society, you know, has different stuff, but particularly in pedagogy, vocal pedagogy. And, and so um, I'll see one guy say one thing, I'll see another guy say something different, or I'll see some guy who's basically parroting something he got out of the Yamaha school of music singing or stole it from another video or just whatever it is, right? What I love is I want to see vocal coaches actually sing. I don't mean showing another student that sings only, and we need that too, absolutely, to prove that your method is true. But I want to see vocal, and I don't want to get on some rant here, but guys, please listen to me when I say this. If what you're teaching doesn't work for your own voice, how can you tell people that it works for other people's voices if you can't do it yourself? So I just want to kind of start there. So Ken Tampa Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. So I'm doing a series on, um, you know, you asked and Ken answered. And so we asked everybody from our newsletter, we asked everybody in our singing forums, we asked all kinds of people uh, on YouTube and Facebook and whatever, and we compiled a whole bunch of, you know, questions. And this question here comes from Dirk uh, from Germany asks, how can I not sound like someone else when I sing? Okay, well, um, I've answered this before and I'll answer it again, no problem. Um, uh, there's lots of ways to do this. First way is, um, there's a, a fallacy or an idea floating around that we shouldn't sound like anyone else, we should sound like ourselves. okay? I know I've said this before, but it's worth saying again. We all have influences. And it's those influences that we have that makes us great, right? So think about this, if I, like my first instrument is guitar, and I grew up as a guitar player and I didn't even really care about singing. Um, I loved Jimmy Page and I, you know, I loved Carlos Santana and I loved Steve Lukather and I loved Al Di Miola and John McLaughlin and like, you know, later Paul Gilbert and uh, you know, lots of fantastic guitar players, Ingve, you know, <laughs> except without the ego. Um, you know, I loved all these guys, right? And so I would learn their licks and then I would take those licks and I would incorporate them or I bring them into my stable, right, or arsenal of licks that I'd learn. And I learned scales and, you know, tons of stuff like that too. By the way, Scott Van Zen is one of my favorite guitar players. I want to interject that because there's a lot of unsung heroes out there and Scott is one of them, doggone it. But um, yeah, so anyway, so I'd learn, you know, these licks and then over time you sort of take this, you know, kind of collage or meshing of all these licks and it becomes your own, right? So it, so, so it is with singing. You're, you're, you know, you learn from people that you love and your favorite artists and this and that, and you take from the staples of all these different people and you bring them into your own and then you represent those as your own and you add your own inflections and influence and so on. Um, I know I've said this before, but I'm gonna say it again, it's worthy, um, you know, at the Rock Hall of Fame, uh, there is uh, kiosks you can go to to see your favorite artist and where their influences came from. So it's not shameful to have influences. It's what makes us great. It's how it increases our palate for singing or playing or doing whatever we do. This could be true for baseball, basketball, soccer moves from Messi to Ronaldo. I don't care what it is. It, you know, this is how we do it. And then we represent this as our own art. So uh, that's one thing. But uh, beyond that, if you're brave enough, and I was brave enough because I have 40 records out. You heard me right, 40 records out. In fact, go to imdb.com and see how much music I've done for film and TV. And by the way, this is kind of what separates information. Um, just ask anybody else you're learning from how much they've really worked at their craft to be able to give you quality information so you know if it's legit or not. Anyway, so um, IMDb is Internet Movie Database. It's music I've done for film and television, so uh, hundreds and hundreds of songs. But anyway, so um, we, if or if you can, I should say, uh, create your own music. Just write your own song. That way, you're not identifying it with you know some other artist out there. What you're doing is you're saying, okay, this is my identity. This is how I represent myself. That way, you won't sound like someone else because there's no other reference point. 
Now you'll have influences from other people and you'll enjoy that and you'll be able to put those pieces of the puzzle together, but in the end, um, you will be forced to sound like yourself because you're writing your own music. So if you can find it in your heart to do that, but Ken, I don't know how to write my own music. Okay, well, then there's an identity crisis and you need to figure out uh, you know, how you're gonna be able to represent your art or represent your art in a way that doesn't sound like somebody else, okay? Hopefully this information was helpful, and until next time, peace out. Hey guys, if you like what you heard, please like and subscribe to my channel. And if you wanna get notified when I have a new cool video come out, you need to go to my channel and click on this little bell icon, and it will actually notify you every time I have a video come out. Thanks guys.